Hello there and welcome into Beyond the Blast Wars, a Star Wars podcast, a podcast made by fans for fans. I'm your host, David Amelotti, and join with me, thankfully, I'm so happy not to be by myself this week, David Gilbert, how are you doing? I'm back from Alaska, and uh, I'd rather be in Alaska. <laughs> you said it was like gloom and doom like the whole day, like it was like gloomy skies and 64 degrees. It was overcast, but it was like temperature-wise, it was comfortable. I was sweating today, I didn't like it. And uh, the scenery was beautiful. I stopped taking pictures because they just they couldn't do it justice. We live in the Midwest, so usually we sweat like heifers. So I'm glad you had a good time up there in Alaska. And Nick, you did some traveling too. And you had the eclipse and you had just all these things. The eclipse was like by far the most amazing experience of my life. <laughs> like, if you watched the video of me like live when I was mm -hmm. covering that thing, holy crap. Did you take was... those pictures that are I over did, there? I did, yeah. That's, and you already got the frame work. Oh, yeah. The yeah. next day. I framed that one. We need to get a photo of you with your Eclipse photo so we can post that on social because you, we know that Nick is by day a meteorologist and a weather nerd 24-7. The photos are like just really cool. I, I mean, mean like, I wish I could have just looked at the photos the entire time than the actual <laughs> Eclipse because you made it look really sweet. I was freaking out, man. Freaking <laughs> All right. So Jesse is still bedridden. So Jesse, our thoughts are with you. Hopefully you're able to join us back here next week. But we have a lot of fun, exciting news to talk about this week. We're also going to toss in a few nuggets that we talked about a couple weeks ago, just because now we have um, most of the crew back together. So it's going to be you exciting. You have the right opinions about things, not the wrong opinions. What are you talking about? I was pretty. I thought it was pretty efficient. There were only a few times where I had like some brain clips. I didn't watch it. Are I, you serious? I, <laughs> I that was a full hour by myself. Know, and my mother's now watching our show, and she wants to know why it takes you so long to edit these and get them on the internet. So, That's a good question. David. I'm one guy, <laughs> and I fall asleep. I'm like a pumpkin. It, it is midnight. I'm done. In fairness, she was then disappointed that you were doing it by yourself, and so she turned it off. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's jump into the first segment of the show. But before we do so, we want to thank you for tuning in. Maybe you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, or you're watching us on YouTube. Either way, thank you so much. If you haven't already, whatever platform you're on right now, however you like to enjoy us. Be sure you hit that subscribe button. If you are watching on our YouTube channel, or if you want to pull up our YouTube channel as you listen, uh, you can comment below as you go through the show and let us know what you think about the things that we talk about. So, Real Talk is the first segment of the show, and that's where we talk about everything movie-related. That can be the saga films, the standalone movies, the 2008 animated release, which I think I get to watch with David very soon. <laughs> Looking forward to that experience. Our first topic this week, though, comes to us thanks to the good people over there at the Star Wars show, the official Star Wars show of Star Wars. It's on StarWars.com. Andy and Anthony gave us the first official look at the new Heavy Walker from The Last Jedi and a new Star Destroyer that the First Order likes to fly around the galaxy. Um, we also, uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, we got, it's called the ATM-6, which stands for All-Terrain Mega Caliber 6. Guys, you have seen this walker. What do you think? Well, we we talked about it um, whenever the Lego set was leaked a while back. Yeah. yeah. And I right. agree. I still, I mean, it's kind of <coughs> cool. One, that that was true. And two, I still think it looks like a giant camel with like a giant, like a humpback. I don't know. It's just and another it's, walker. It's got like the gorilla. Right. Arms. And, and I get, I... I feel like there's got to be a better way to traverse the landscape than a giant walker. I, I like could be wrong. We though. already have like hovering vehicles. Why do we need to rely on legs anymore? It's it's don't get wrong. It's really badass looking, but it's really like impractical. They're saying it makes the ATAT -AT look small. That's which is hard to fathom. I, I mean, like if you think like the scene like Rogue One, where like they're all running, you see them behind you, like that gives yeah. you. I think that's the best representation for scale of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, like on they're computer, bigger than that. Pretty that's, tiny. That's frightening. You smart mouth. No, I mean that's what they're saying. Is it, it's going to dwarf the ATAT, -AT, and I, I'm curious to see how this plays a factor. Um, oh yeah, I have the Lego set behind me, um, which we'll get to that in a second. Lego set. Remind, remind me. Say Legos. Um, the thing about it is, is those legs on the front. I like seeing the, the, that rigid piece of metal on the front two legs. To me, that seems like that can cut tow cables and things that would wrap around, maybe, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you look at those ape-like front legs, I wonder, you know, I thought it was so cool. The one thing I did like in that 2008 Clone Wars movie was that the ATT scale that cliff. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool. It kind of looks like this walker might be able to scale, and if it can't scale, can it, like... You know, it kind of put itself up to where it could take a shot at maybe like 
ships or maybe like a, 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 a station or a base that's kind of like higher up geographically, you know what I'm saying? I see you. I see you. you. Know, so that might be a thing. Now, I mentioned the Lego thing earlier. There is a great guy on YouTube. His name is Zhang Bricks, or that's what his channel name is. And he actually got uh, the Lego set, and he actually stacked it up right next to the at AT Lego set that I have behind me. I don't know if you guys can see that on air. It's, it's that guy right there. You probably can't see it, but I, I tried. I made, I made the effort. Same height. Same width. Almost looks identical. And so except I'm a little... Except for the... Except for the front feet, but like I'm kind of disappointed because like scale-wise, it's like almost the same set, which is kind of annoying. I really do hope it is larger. I mean, they're saying it is. I want this thing to be a monstrosity. I am getting the fear that Nick shared three episodes ago. It's it's feeling very hothy to me. Yep. It's feeling very hothy to me. And, you know, Ryan Johnson has gone out there and been like, oh, you know, it's going to have some beats, but it's going to be vastly different. I, I believe you. And if it's a good battle, I'm not going to complain. I think ultimately if it's a good battle and it's well done, great. Um, but it is starting to feel very hothy. Now, something that I have not seen. Uh, th th this looks pretty cool. It's the new uh, First Order Star, de uh, Star Destroyer, and it's uh, the Juggernaut? Dreadnought. The Dreadnought. I apologize. But yes, Nick, the Dreadnought. What do you think about this ship? It's um, not. It just looks like a pancake version of a Star Destroyer. It's, okay. It's think... still got just the triangle thing, and yeah, it's it's. I don't know. It's it's it. I feel like Star Wars has gone the Halo route, where cause like Halo kind of had things just looked very clean and sleek, and mm -hmm. then they decided to make everything like very industrial looking and bulky, and that's kind of exactly what they're doing. They're just making everything darker colored and bulkier. I think it looks like a big slice of pizza. I feel like we need a big, like, Sparrow advertisement <laughs> on the side of it, like, mall pizza. <laughs> I'm trying to think. There is a model uh, of a Star Destroyer that we think... I think we get in Rebels. Um, but it kind of reminds me of this Dreadnought, where it's flat. It has the energy wells on it. It, like, can drag the ships out of hyperspace. That's kind of what I'm looking at. There's, like, a weird thing on the bottom of it. Like, what? Is that like there's two cannon? Or? Two turbo cannons are underneath yeah, that. turbo cannon. Now, here's my thing about this. It kind of... It, it reminds me there was an EU line... There was an EU ship, Star Destroyer, that the ship had the power of the Death Star. And there are, like, multiple ships like this. I don't think these cannons have that strength. That'd be a bit... Frightening. But that's yeah. what kind of came to mind. I'll be honest with you. In The Force Awakens, I thought that's what we were going to get. I thought we were going to get a, ship, a fleet of like five ships that had these big, powerful cannons on there. I would assume if this ship is going to have these two cannons on display like they are so prominently on the on the hull, I'm going to think that maybe we're getting like an aerial bombardment scene? I mean, I mean, the way they're sticking out, it kind of looks a little, like, looks a little yeah. appropriate. Like, I mean, like, here's the thing. Kind of dangling there. Like, I feel like they're going, they're trying to go for, like, a sleek, like, almost kind of, like, invisible, like, uh, I don't, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, F-22 is a, uh, uh, jet that is... Stealth. Stealth, thank you. It's, like, a stealth look, but, like, they have, like, the weird thing hanging off the bottom of it. So I feel like, I don't know, it's just, like, some type of, like, way to, like, get past, like, radar in the future or that is also a long time ago in the galaxy far away. The designer says that Ryan Johnson wanted to have something flat that had a ground-firing gun platform and that it had to have a flat surface for gun turrets, so it's basically an armored gun boat with a gun platform. You know what I wonder? I wonder if they're going to have, like, troops, like, attack this thing, like, land on the surface. We've seen that in Clone Wars a few times. Where you'll see like troops and tanks like jump out of one cruiser, that go through space and land on the ship to like infiltrate it. That'd be kind of something new that we haven't seen in a saga film. I mean, they're mentioning here that the thing is seven kilometers long, and I'm looking at the cannon, and it's like probably what a third of the size. So it's probably my like... understanding is that that star that dreadnought is twice the size of a standard star destroyer. Two and a half times, according to this article. Whew. So, like, that's almost, like, what, two and a half, three miles long? So... No, four. Four or five? So the, the, the normal Star Destroyers are that small, huh? Yeah, you think they would be a lot... They, they seem a lot larger. Bigger. Where the hell do they get the time and manpower to build this? I know what they do on the roads here, and how long it takes <laughs> them. It's just a little pad of concrete. Well, we could, they can do, like, labor camps. So they probably got that. 
And there's also a lot more creatures they can force to do things. Probably. I think that there we is... We have, like, things like OSHA. <laughs> Who needs that? <laughs> now, I'm really mad because... Oh, the uh, Interdictor class, Star Destroyer, is what I was thinking about. It has those four energy wells on top. Oh, yeah. I had this image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll pull the image up right now for you to see. This is the Star Destroyer I was thinking of earlier. <laughs> it's not flat. It's not flat like the Dreadnought. But it, it, to me, it has some similarities. Um, and this is a ship that we've seen uh, in Rebels What? It just looks very weird. I oh, yeah. I, I like it. It's an EU ship that they brought back in the canon. For yeah, the they got like, um, like Yoshi eggs on the side. It looks yeah, like. yeah, kind of. But you know what? It can like birth like other like crew. <clears throat> but isn't that ship believable? I would love it. I mean, I was so happy that they brought it back because this feels like one of those, you know, this feels like a, a Star Destroyer yeah. taking a few Are steps in technology. I can see it. I can see I'm okay it. with it. Well, guys, overall, we're both happy. We're, ha yeah. we're happy with both designs. I like new I'm things. Okay yeah, new I, things are fun, right? As long as they don't. I mean, the, I the mean, thing I hate about it is that the course are going to make new things you have to buy and all that. That's what yeah. I hate about it. But I mean, it doesn't look ridiculous, and it looks like the way technology <clears throat> would design. Yeah, that's you know. that is the one thing that I'm finding very reassuring about some of the latest ships that we've we've been getting glimpses at. It does seem like that next progression in the Star Wars technology. And that's something that we weren't saying a lot about the Force Awakens stuff. So well, this is really exciting. One of my gripes with the original prequels is that everything looks clean and the technology looks better than it does 20 years later where everything looks like a shithole that's been lived in for you know, a long time. So I, I kind of like that it makes it look like technology is moving forward in the yeah. universe. Sounds good. Yep. Let's jump to the next topic right now and it's scheduling conflicts causes a bit of an issue with the standalone Han Solo movie. I know that Jesse's real bummed out not to be able to talk about this. Michael Kenneth Williams, who is a tremendous actor, unfortunately, according to Deadline, due to scheduling conflicts, uh, filming drama with the Red Sea uh, diving report, Williams is unavailable for the additional reshoots that have been scheduled uh, for the Han Solo film. So Lucasfilm cut his role entirely from the movie. Uh, a quote from Williams says, you know, I felt great about what I created with the directors that I worked with. Um, and he was referencing Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Uh, who exited the project back in June. By exit, they were fired. Uh, he says it is what it is. David, let's start with you, because we know that Michael Kenneth Williams is a fantastic actor, but you know, his character was supposed to add some levity to the to the film. What are your thoughts about his role being entirely cut out? So, I'll, I'll be honest, I've never actually seen anything that he's in, except for the Ghostbusters movie last year. And um, when I was browsing his IMDB profile, I, I felt kind of bad about that, because he looks familiar, I, just, I have no idea, outside of my research, who he is. So, I think he's a phenomenal actor, and I'm, I'm going to take that to heart, because that's what the articles tell me, and the research tells me, so, great job, you got my stamp of approval. Well, um, too bad he's out of the film entirely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the thing, though, I mean, we know that there's been a lot of shake-ups with the production team, and if Ron Howard thought that this character could be cut out of the film without hurting it, maybe he didn't need to be in the film in the first place. Not a knock against him, or a knock against the writing team and the former directors. Yeah, I can, I can so, roll with that. I mean, it doesn't say that he's completely out of it, it just says he's out of reshoots. So maybe they'll use snippets of what he's got, or maybe recast it, or maybe change the way, you know, with the movie editing, that he comes across, so. Yeah, I mean, we all, we've been over this. It's Lawrence Kasdan's swan song, and so anything that's going to deviate from that original vision of his script kind of bums me out. But at the same time, Disney and Lucasfilm's focus has always been story first, and we've seen that with how they've handled The Force Awakens. We've seen that with how they uh, handled the reshoots with Rogue One. Maybe it's for the best. I mean, if, if, if they can't shoot, it's better to cut them out than shoehorn them in, right, Nick? Yeah. I think that the best part about me being on vacation for three weeks and uh, work trips for the last three weeks is that I forgot that this movie was a thing, oh, and now it's crushed into my life again, so I'll start thinking about the fact that this is going to be a movie at some point. I mean, either way, I liked him in The Wire. Uh, I know uh -huh. he's in The Wire. It's enjoyable. I mean, so he's definitely a really good actor. Um, whatever he would have brought to the Star Wars movie, I mean, I feel like would have been a positive vibe, so it's kind of sad to see him go, but... We'll see. I know he's worked on other projects, so he's keeping busy, which is good. No, that's. I, I, I think it's really fantastic, and I, and I think I think the, the point that really needs to be reiterated is the fact that uh, the story is being kept the top priority, and if it's a thing where you shoehorn him in there and it's a distraction from the main story, uh, well, that's only going to make 
the film not you know it's it's going to weaken the film. So I'm fine with it just being cut out. And if it's a character like David said, if it's a character that can be completely eliminated and not damage the overall story, we're probably not missing much. In the you know we're not we're not missing much. I, I appreciate they are taking the effort <coughs> to save something about this movie. So they are making efforts to make it decent. <laughs> I so. mean, here's the thing: we're going to go into this with such low expectations that you know it's going to blow us away. If like that's a <laughs> thing. Like, if it is actually good, it may be, like, one of the greatest movies of all time, just because I've shot it down yeah, it's for such a all the time. By the time it comes out, almost a year of just trash-talking it. <laughs> I wish you guys would have been here last week, because then we could have talked about how the Death Star is possibly going to be in the Han Solo movie. Oh, boy. Really? Nope. <laughs> Next topic, all right. So we're sitting with the Han Solo Star Wars spinoff movie, uh, because we have now confirmation, thanks to director Ron Howard on his Twitter account, uh, that... Our good pal, Donald Glover, has completed filming for the Han Solo movie. Lando Calrissian, his, his, his scene. David, you know, this, is seem, this seems to be the one bright spot of this movie from the very beginning. Donald Glover, Lando Calrissian. Uh, what are your thoughts about him wrapping up his filming experience? I'm excited. It means that the movie's moving forward. It means that they're actually getting things accomplished and checking off the, the boxes for Ron Howard's vision for this movie. So, I, I mean, did you see the selfie with him and Ron Howard? I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice, I mean, they look happy. I wish I had a selfie with Ron Howard like that. <laughs> Minus Don of Lover's mustache. I kind of wish I had the stash, though, I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. You know, he did a really nice job of not making that look, like, too porny. You know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> like, like, I remember, like, Billy Dee Williams in the Empire, like, that stash is, like, borderline, like, kind of pedophile. <laughs> you know, kind of nasty. But, like, that was the style in the 80s, you know? Like, that got women going. Or late 70s, you know? Yeah, it was 80. It was 80. Nick, what do you think about this guy? Because originally, because, like, just a couple weeks ago, we talked about how he was, like, a little nervous about the whole experience because he knows he's not Ron Howard's pick for the role, but they stuck together. My concern is, if he is done, but they're still talking about these reshoots, does that mean he's not going to be a huge role in this movie? They probably just got his stuff done. I mean, I'm, ho- I'm hoping that's the case. I mean, it, it, it just worries me that it's like, they keep talking about these reshoots, but yeah. if he's done already, I mean, do they just rush to get his stuff done? Do he have something else well, to do? Well, also, we don't actually have a, we actually don't have a percentage of how much of this movie is being reshot. We know it's like a majority of the film, but they have been saying they are going to keep some of what was shot by <clears throat> Phil right. Lord. So it's, you know, it could be a thing where some of those scenes with, with Donald are being saved. Well, right. his, his next big thing is another Disney production. It's The Lion King, where he's going to be the voice of Simba. Right. And that's going really? for 2019. So well, that's may, neat. maybe I can see why they rushed him out of production right. for that. So they can well, he has so much going on. I think he's like number one right now in Top 40 or something, a song. I mean, with his music, with his acting, with, with from movies and TV. I mean, the guy, the guy has a busy schedule. I'm just excited to know that it's wrapped up. It seems like it's a really... Uh, of a positive ending on this journey for uh, Glover on the set of Han Solo, and I just want to see more of this continue on, and I think my spirits are so high right now, just because the last four or five weeks, we've really gotten some cool behind-the-scenes looks and some cool updates from Howard Social. They know how to do PR. He's learned how to do PR, and he's doing it well. And I don't know That's if it's... what's good. Here's my thing. Is it Ron Howard or someone using his, his account? It, I don't know. I don't care at this I, point. I think it's definitely someone telling him to do things. Yeah. But it's, I think it's him doing it. Mm-hmm. It's just, they're like, maybe you should just post like this today. <laughs> like, he is... I mean, it's good. I mean, they, they've yeah. learned how to PR this movie well. Yeah. I think they're starting to... Well, they, the they're turning it around. Yeah, for sure. Too. Yeah, yeah. Really they need to. And, and we're excited for it. And let's go ahead to a topic that I know that we're all excited for. And I talked about this uh, pretty at length Called it. Last week. Called it. But we're going to talk about Obi-Wan, standalone movie now. Nailed it. That we can be together. This is such a beautiful moment. Um, The Hollywood Reporter confirmed a couple weeks ago that an exclusive story, an Obi-Wan movie, is in the works. Oscar-nominated filmmaker Stephen Daldry is in early talks for the film. This story confirms, one, there is an Obi-Wan movie happening. There is not a script. Ewan McGregor is not locked in at the time, at this time. They'll lock him in. Now, here's the thing. They better. They, if they don't, then we're going downhill. So here's my thing. Around. If you have Daldry, and you're trying to get him to, to lock in for this film, I don't think you're, you're, you're sweet-talking him without a script. They either have a very extensive treatment, or they have a at least a first rough draft of this movie. See, I think quite the opposite. I think that if they're going to bring Daldry in for this, he's going to want his own say in what happens in the, okay. in the script. I agree. But do they, you, don't, they don't want a repeat of what just happened with the Han Solo film. <laughs> 
They want to bring but, in somebody who's going to stay. But here's completely different, though, because they brought in, uh, no disrespect against Lord and, and Miller, but they are younger directors. They are more of these independent directors. That was the whole message of Lucasfilm two mm-hmm. years ago, is we want to bring in the next generation. Mm-hmm. Well, Daldry's experience has a very impressive resume. This mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think it could be that way. I would think that they would say, these are the kind of the ideas we have. And he's like, well, I might like this one and this one, but I also have this idea and this idea. And don't for a minute think that if you want Ewan McGregor in this movie... He's getting sassy. No, I... <laughs> because I want this movie, because this is the one movie that I... All, all of us and, and all my other friends, when we found out that they were going to do standalone movies, the first character we said was, if they do any of the original characters, there should be an Obi-Wan story in between three and four. And Ewan McGregor, when he get whatever script they hand him, he's going to go, I don't like that, we're gonna, we should do this. He's going to have to stay on the script, too. Because he's not going to enter back into this prequel era unless... Oh, I think he will. I think he will take any opportunity if he has to say back in the script. Oh, I think yeah. he, he wants to play the role, don't get me wrong, but I think he I, the story's going to have to be a good one. I mean, I think if they turn around and say, well, Obi-Wan's no longer wearing brown robes, he's now wearing a circus clown, here's the red nose... Then he'll say to shove off, but I, I think he's going to want to get back in for his fans because he knows that we want to see him again. I mean, like, you think about the Star Wars entire thing, like, most of it is like a, a basically story of um, uh, Anakin. Right. But, like, that second person who's there in almost every movie is Obi Wan. Like, right. it, it, it's the most logical step for another character. Will this movie... So I want to tackle a, a couple topics here. How, how do we envision maybe this movie going? And then second, who, it, who is the opposition? So let's first start off with this movie. Are we staying on Tatooine, David, the entire time? Are we going to see Obi-Wan go on an adventure off of Tatooine and start, have to come back? Start with Nick on this one. I can put this in. Nick, what do you think? Uh, I think they have to go... I, I really hope they go Clone War era with it. I hope they're back in the Clone Wars because I feel like... Um, the Clone Wars series focused a lot on Anakin. Right. And I would love to see a Clone Wars focused more with Obi-Wan. Well, he's now, generally kind of been doing other things, yeah. just randomly showing up. I'd love to see like his side of the So Clone you want Wars. to take it further back before Revenge of the Sith? Yeah, I want to go like wow. episode between two and three. And I, I want Mace that. Windu in this movie. Samuel Jackson wow. better be in this movie. Because no one's talking about that. I think everyone believes that this is going to be, you know, um, an older Ben. In the desert. I hope not. Five, six years after Revenge of the Sith. Is he just going to leave Luke alone and go off planet to hang out? Or is he going to go just like Benton and Moss Eisley? And- well, that kind of goes to my second point. It's like, who could he be facing? I mean, is Vader in this movie? Is it a bounty hunter? Is it a Cad Bane character that we got introduced to in Clone Wars? Is it a Dr. Aphra type character that's kind of new to all this stuff? I mean. Wow, that would be ballsy on, on their part to bring in that character. Well, Doctor Aphra, she was introduced in the comics, and it's a yeah. it's a character that's getting a huge following. There's a lot of fans of that line. Is that the Gillen run? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you do pre Ahsoka. Okay, you don't bring her in yet because that'd be too difficult. I think to appease everybody. Mm-hmm. I think you do pre Ahsoka, but you still do Clone War with Anakin and Obi Wan. Okay, Anakin's off doing things. All right, but you have focus on Obi Wan. And he's just, I don't know, do you make it, ah, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make it like a Grievous battle, because I feel like that was you know not what I, done well. Well, I think Grievous, here's the thing, and I've said this before, there are scenes that got cut out that included Grievous and Revenge of the Sith, mm-hmm. that would have given a lot more legitimacy to that character. And of course, if you go back and watch the Clone Wars, that series flushes out Grievous quite a bit as oh, well. Oh yeah, for you know? sure. Um, but... Yeah, I, I think I would love to see Cad Bane on screen. Mm-hmm. I think Cad Bane is a bounty hunter that could be a real threat throughout a, a, a full cinematic movie. Um, I, I don't think I want to see Vader because, you know, I, I mentioned this last week. That line in, in, in A New Hope, when, the, when Vader and Obi-Wan meet, you know, when I left you, I, would, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only an evil of the evil Darth, you know. You know, I want that to be referencing Revenge of the Sith, that great mm-hmm. final battle that Lucas gave us in Revenge of the Sith. Where they haven't seen each other for 20 years. Right. I don't want it to be a thing where, like, 10 years ago they almost crossed paths or they were sensing something and they, they just didn't know it was each other. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in that. That's not what I want. And I think Nick's idea, because I'm not hearing anyone else talk about going back to, like, the, 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 that era. Like, going back that far. I think that just, I think that so would make sense. If like they do that, that, if they do that, I think you have an opportunity. I think they're going to see how fans react to this movie in theaters, and I could see them, 
I think the the possibility of a trilogy of Obi Wan films becomes very possible if they bring it as early back as Nick has suggested. So here's a wild hair. Okay. So I've been watching more of the Clone Wars. Yes, you have. Through season five now. Okay. And I can't say that I like Darth Maul being back, but man, were those good episodes. But what if we see a Darth Maul? as a villain in this movie. Like, that, I, would, like, I thought about that, but I would also hate that. I don't know. Mitch, I hate that he's not dead, but wow, were those good episodes. I would I would be into it, but do you... I mean, here's my thing now at this point. It's like, do you bring Ray Park back to play Maul, or do you have Sam Whitworth get in there? Because physically, I think Maul, I, I think Sam could do that role, too. And Sam he's also the guy the, who voiced him? Yeah, Sam is the guy who voices him through Clone Wars and through Rebels. And on Battlefront 2. I don't know. I feel like if they were meant to meet, it would have happened in the TV show. And that's why I don't think you can do it in a standalone movie. Unless, like, I mean, I don't know. That's tough. That's a, that's tough. I mean, unless this is, like, how they all figure out he's alive. It's, like, some weird, they meet, disturbance... He ventures in somewhere and discovers him, and they have a weird battle and movie ends. I don't know. I would, you know, something that I would kind of like if they do what, because I'm really buying into what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. Bring Satine into the movie, yeah, and, and explore that. Romance. Yeah, that would be really fun. Ooh, you know what? If they do that, then bring Maul in. You know why the hell not? I just, I'm really sold on this because I was really only thinking about Ben in the desert. But you know, Satine might actually be a good thing to bring in. Because when you look at what Stephen Daldry does really well, that's bringing the drama, specifically the emotion to it. Okay. And so this might be a great time to explore that side of... Because we've really never had good romance in Star Wars. Right. I mean, Clo Attack of the Clones was essentially like a two-hour Titanic. I mean, that's how I base all of my relationships in my life. <laughs> I, I want to find my Padme. That's why you're still single. I will say, though, <laughs> uh, randomly off top. I love you. <laughs> off topic is yeah. that that, that um, track, uh, Across Stars Love Theme, whatever, in yeah. episode two, that's my favorite Star Wars track. It's so good. Wow, that's the only favorite thing from Clone Attack of Clones that I've ever heard of. Uh, let's go on to the next segment of this show. That was real talk, and it was a lot of fun. Obi-Wan already? Well, what, what more do you want to say about we it? We spoke about Obi-Wan almost as long as Han Solo. I feel like we need to give this movie that we like a little more loving. Well, well, what do you think that hasn't been said that you think that you need to say right now? I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, now you're, getting, now you're getting a little anxious. Well, now I'm excited. Now you see my knees. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing: is now we know that we're gonna have at least two years of news coming out about the Han, about the the Obi Wan movie, and I just I get the next thing. Here's what's next with this story: is getting Ewan McGregor confirmed, getting his involvement confirmed. I think it's assumed, but it's not a guarantee. He mentioned it a while ago that he'd be interested. He's so. mentioned on a lot of shows. I mean, there were there were talks about this on Late Night about eight months ago. He needs to just show up on Colbert and be like, "I'm in," and then I'm woo. Well, I mean, realistically, it'd be Kimmel, right? ABC. Yeah, probably Kimmel. But, I mean, that would be really cool. I think the new, the next news is he's confirmed, Daltrey's locked in, script is in is in motion. I, I was reading while you were talking about something I didn't care about. Great. Um, Daltrey has a writing buddy that he brings in, a guy named David Hare, um, and they do a lot of collaboration together. So maybe that's why they don't have a big script yet, because they know Daltrey's going to want to bring his writing partner to put that together. I want this movie... To be two hours, two and a half hours. I want a Lord of the Rings style four hour movie where they give me a three hours like theatrical cut and then another hour plus of deleted scenes. I want a movie where there's an intermission in it where you have to go out and everyone starts oh. discussing theories like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? And then, I want this movie not to have any massive reshoots. <laughs> no great scandals. No dumpster fire. No physical harm to any of the actors. No broken arms. No no near death experiences. And no recasting of Carrie, Mark, or Harrison. Yeah, I don't think that would be a factor in this movie. I I just said yeah. I want it out there. Well, okay. Well, what do you think about this? Okay, so you want to keep talking about this movie? Here's here's something to consider. Uh, what do you think about what do you think about the idea that we could see a young Luke in this movie? I mean, I go back to the, the Twin Suns episode of, the, of Star Wars Rebels, and, and you'll get there, David, I'm sorry. <coughs> but, you know, at, at one point, you see Obi, the older Ben, you know, rubbing his beard and, and, and the small farm boy running across, you know, off in the distance. We might see, depending on when they place this movie, if it is between three and four, we might see a, a young Luke. 
I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Like, I mean, I think that's realistically, I think they're probably going to push it later on. But I still, my heart is on Clone, War, Clone Wars yeah, era stand Now that's, you've got me really excited. That's what Wars. I want. I want lightsabers, battles galore. Yeah. We make lightsaber battles great again. We need we need that a thing because it's severely lacking in the current. There was an episode of uh, Clone Wars I recently watched in season 5. Yep. And I'm pretty sure that 18 out of the 23 minutes was just lightsaber fighting. Like, oh! And I have to go back and rewatch it because that was just really cool. Well, that's one of the great reasons that, the, like, that's one of the great things about the Clone Wars. Is it was that's what I mean! That's, yeah. what, that's what we want! We want a lot of lightsabers. We got them in, in Attack of the Clones, just. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, nobody should have died? Yeah, a lot that's of slaughter. Crazy! A lot of slaughter. So, um, so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, especially because it gives uh, David's theory of an Owen Lars meth moisture farmer <laughs> theory <laughs> life again. Because if you go back to Tatooine, you're gonna see the Larms homestead. You're gonna get Owen. I, I'm gonna be Owen. It. It's gonna be great. I God, I hope he says it just like that. <laughs> and then someone just like throat kicks Luke. <laughs> go buy your T16, bitch. Okay, cool. So that's me trying to be funny. Now we're gonna go on to the next segment because why the hell not? But before we do, we wanna remind you that you can support the show. We have uh, shirts and mugs and all the different kinds of merchandise right now at tpublic.com. You can find that link right now in the description below. Um, I would wear my shirt on this episode, but it's in the wash right now. So I got, I got one. It's not in yet. It's in the mail? My mother got one, too. I know, because you don't want to buy it yourself. <laughs> she also says you shouldn't wear tank tops on the show. I, it was one time, and it let the horizontal breeze flow through. It's nice. Yeah, she's going to watch this episode and call me and be like, you're putting words in my mouth. This is what we need to do it live. We need to get her on the, yeah. on the line. We, live. we need to get this show live. I love my mother to death. We don't, we don't need her on the show. <laughs> no, we need to do it. We need to do it. Nick says that we have the, we have the capabilities. We just need to invest Oh, I, we stream that Eclipse live, so... Four hundred thousand people. We can. Whoa. We can do this. Wait, four hundred thousand? You eclipse, didn't tell me that. Did the, you, the coverage well, was crazy. Did you plug our show then? Oh shit! You like space this much? <laughs> Turn the gun to glass for us. You get a weekly dose. Oh, I'm sure everyone would have just clicked off at that moment. I don't oh. know what you just. Clicked hey, on. guess what, guys? Pages, pixels, and pieces. That's a segue. <laughs> we're going to the next segment of the show, David. I love you. Did I you really just do. delete a topic off of the the Google? In the show notes? No, that's just an announcement that got bumped down to later. Oh. Thanks for thanks for calling that out and bringing attention to it. Well, listen. When you I think mean, inside, when you think inside your head, keep it inside that. Yell at me for not reading the show notes, and here I am reading the show notes. And now you're changing them. You know what? Battlefront Two is what I'm looking forward to really badly. It's coming out in a couple of months, and it's going to probably require me to buy a PlayStation Four unless we actually get the installer thought, on the PC. I think PC Master Race. Fine, we're going to do the PC. What? Good. Leave. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, just taking, kidding. I'm taking the show. No, I'm just kidding. That was my nipple. Okay, so here. today, Stop uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Hey, can I have some of that food? No. Um, Gamescom, <laughs> about like seven or eight days ago, released new footage of Battlefront 2, and we've all watched this, and uh, it gives you basically, what, two and a half minutes was the trailer that we watched, but it gives you uh, flight simulation, your experience in dogfights throughout various areas, eras, of the of the Star Wars galaxy, and, and I'm in love with it. There is a scene with the Millennium Falcon that I'm obsessed with. That I'll talk about in a little bit. But Nick, you are our game expert. What are your thoughts about this this video? It's what the Star Wars battle. As I've been saying, it's the Star Wars Battlefront that we should have had the first time around. Yeah, back in 2015. That they finally figured out how to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just real pretty. Um, obviously, the the beauty of it they, uh, during the Gamescom, they had like a ten minute long match where they had just a huge battle. I hope they figured out the flight mechanics because I feel I still feel they were not very good. Okay. Uh, even in the beta. Okay. I watched people play the beta and just did not look very good still, which is kind of surprising because I mean it's being made by Dice and they have a good history with making like battlefield games where mm -hmm. the flight mechanics are pretty solid. Especially uh, Battlefront 3, I thought it had the best flight mechanics out of any game I've played on PC in a long time. Um, so they got to figure that out. they got to make this easy. Because, I mean, the thing they're really pushing is the Starfighter Assault mode. That's And even, like, in the, um, um, the footage we got back in E3, mm -hmm. they had the, the Starfighters flying around and all that. I mean, the flight mechanics are going to be a huge part of this, and that's what everybody's looking for. And it's just real pretty. I mean, you see all the different... Uh, 
vehicles they have in there. I mean, there's the B-Wing, the Y-Wing, the Arkwin 70s. I'm so excited. The one, like um, I said, you regret not buying. Yeah, now I, they're like $200 on eBay. I think they all look pretty. Yeah. Oh. David, what, what are you excited the most when you see this new video? I mean, like, what's... Cause I did not get this excited for the, for the 2015 release. The graphics got me really excited, David, because it kind of looks kind of like a movie. Like the Easy Master Race. Looks really good. <laughs> so I feel like I'm excited for this because I'm terrible at space battles. So I could see myself playing this for like three minutes saying, screw it, throwing the controller against the wall, and then watching <laughs> other people play it and enjoying it. See, that's not how I am with Nick playing Battlegrounds. <laughs> like, I watch this dude just shoot at, like, you know, people for like four hours so I mean outside of watching other people play stupid three-dimensional I can't figure that crap out but um, I'll watch you play the game the, That'll be fun. the levels seem excited yeah. like exciting to me like I was watching the little segment in there where they're on Camino mm -hmm. and that looks gorgeous so I love the environments and I mean that's what I noticed a lot too. of attention to detail with any three remember when they were doing the battle of theme map yeah. but I'll take your word for it okay well they were doing the theme map and I just got blown away because like you said David it looks cinematic. I mean, it looks like it's we're watching a, a, now, a deleted scene out of the movie. Granted, you know, this is the promo thing, so they're going to make it a little, a little sexier for us than it'll probably end up looking like. Unless um, you buy a PC, according to Nick. Beastmaster X. I have a PC. Why would I buy another one? Well, then we're not getting you the game on a PC. We're all going to play together. It's going to be great. People will be able to play us. <laughs> we'll have, like, Wes That's Braswell. Best. Shout out to you, Wes. Wes listens. He can, he can play against us. No? Not interested in that at all? Well, I'll give you what I like about it. That wouldn't be a fair fight. <laughs> Whatever. What I like about this is seeing the reaction of the ships in, like, atmosphere. There's a great shot of the Millennium Falcon kind of, like, um, kind of waving in the air, that reaction, and it kind of looks like that scene that we got in The Force Awakens, that first trailer. Uh, but that's what I'm excited for. I think I don't even enjoy playing in third person more than first person in this game. Obviously, I won't be able to make that final decision until I'm actually playing the video game. Mm -hmm. But based on the footage that I've seen compared to first person, third person, I'm going to like that third person perspective. I think I'm going to get lost in the cinematic feel of this game. And I'm just going to go ahead and admit that now. And it's probably going to affect my kill ratio. I mean, your kill ratio is not good to begin with, so. That's I mean, a lot. I think what? The, the other thing, too, is the scale of this game. 50 10 the last time we played, bro. Get at me. 50-10? Yeah. Bullshit. That's not, that's not loud. I had 50-10. I was rocking it. That's your kill to death ratio? Yeah. Because I outscore you every game of the PlayStation 2 Battlefront 2 that we play. You're delirious. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know what? We're doing a rematch. Okay. And we're recording. Another, another Galactic Conquest? Shh. No, I hate that. It takes really? too damn long. Oh, see, I like that. I love Galactic like Conquest. It just takes forever. I wonder if we're going to get that feature on there. I don't remember us getting that feature. I, would, I don't know. I would love for that. Maybe, Maybe I'll be okay with that. I know we recapped all the different... I think we recap game modes. I mean, I hope they do the AI. Episode the 7, if you want to go back and watch. Of our show? Yeah. We're, how many are we at right now? Well, this is 14, like this I said, it's the really... beginning of the hour. Wow, that was a long time ago. Oh, man, this is just... I love how you guys... We're just all, all on the same page. Hey, Nick, you were about to say something before I started yelling at you. I, the, the scale of some of these math things is going to be what's going to be really, really fun, too. The, the actual the size of them is going to be really, really... Just fun to play with. Also, I'm like, as I'm watching just some more gameplay of it because I can't stop watching it, I, I think it's funny how, like, if this game were to keep realism in mind, like, this space battle would be absolutely quiet with absolutely no noise whatsoever. That's how Star Wars in general would be. It would be so, like, uh, <coughs> the only show that I know that did that was Firefly, and all their space scenes were just quiet, and I always thought that was, like, very unique to that show because, like, they didn't care about like the sound effects and all that, which could be A, just laziness, or B, try to keep to reality. But it just here's my thing: yeah. when people make the Fire argument Fire that Fire. when they make the argument that the sound shouldn't be in the space battle for Star Wars, think of that opening scene of Revenge of the Sith, the two starfighters coasting across the the top of, of that Venator destroyer, and then going down, and then you hear all the explosions. Yeah, see, so you know what I'm talking about. I love that that beat in the beginning. Is so good. Um, are you not hearing the sound because your computer is on mute? I had it muted, yeah. Yeah we, yeah, we can't play the audio. That would possibly be illegal. Copyright, copyright. Yeah, have got to be careful. Hey, next topic, because we're going to segue from pixels in a video game to pixels of a cartoon animated series. Star Wars Rebel Season 3 drops on DVD Hi. Or, and Blu-ray, and it did it uh, this week, actually. Here's my thing. Do we go buy the DVD and the Blu-ray now, 
or wait until the complete series is released in like 18 months. I told you to wait. I think you just gotta wait, fam. I don't want to wait. It's gotta just wait. There are so many great behind-the-scenes behind features the uh, on this. You know, David, there's behind this. Oh, wait, David, you're there's, not and there's, caught up. And there's spoilers on here that you didn't tell me when I opened this up earlier really tonight. Oh, damn. I did do that to you, like, didn't I? Like that big image right there. I mean, yes. Oh, F. I'm sorry, buddy. It's okay, you're almost done with uh, Clone Wars, so we'll, I get, am. we'll get you going on so, Rebels. I mean, I guess I can spoil it because it's been out for longer than a week, <laughs> like three, four years. But Darth Maul's alive. Oh. I know that now. And I saw this real, like, I, this is the arc I watched last night. It was beautiful, Nick. This is the one where uh, Palpatine, like, senses Darth Maul back. Oh, yeah, So yeah. he just, like, gets his ship, goes to Mandalore, and just, like, you know, not even a hello or how's it going, but, like, You've forgotten. There's only one rule of the Sith. There's only two, and just beats the shit out of him. <laughs> and there goes like, explosive ready. And then he kills Savage, and uh, um, then he like cuts him in half again, and then shocks the crap out of him. Like talk about an eight Poor guy. experience. And then he's like, "Well, I'm not gonna kill you." So I was kind of looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen in the next season, but apparently nothing if he's back here. Um. Thanks. For mm. that. Yeah, the, the the hidden episodes, those are just, they're kind of like their own thing, and they're just so worthwhile. They're really great. So are the hidden episodes within that 13 that's still on? Netflix? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are. So getting back on track with Star Wars Rebels, so maybe Nick, you and I are having this conversation instead. There's background, um, like there's specials on Thrawn, bringing Thrawn back into canon, or officially into canon for the first time, because it was EU before. The Dark Saber. Uh, we learned that that's actually a creation from the mind of George Lucas himself. Uh, and there's a few other uh, featurettes that are available on this box set. So here's my thing, I guess. If you've already bought seasons one and two, you might as well go buy three now. Right. But I think if if it's me where I haven't bought the seasons yet, uh, then I'm probably just going to wait for that box series because I love the collector's edition uh, Blu-ray set that I got of The Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. Every season... Um, well, I mean, I still have the hidden episodes. Those that's you know season six. I have that on DVD uh, separately. No, you wanted to watch Rebels with me, right? Yeah. So how are we watching that? Because I don't think that's on. Does Nico have it on DVD? Probably. Yeah. Someone does. We have people that we can borrow it from. It won't you know. be. It won't be hard. Um, okay, cool. So you know, it's totally up to you. If you're in a buy or if you've already bought uh, season three on DVD or Blu-ray, comment below and let us know what you think. And I hope that throughout the entire episode so far, you've been commenting below on things that we've said. Maybe you like them, maybe you don't like them, maybe you have an opinion of your own, and that's what makes you special. You. You are you. That's not how that conversation usually goes, but my just, dad tried when I was 13, and it was a good effort. You just All right. really preachy there. We did? Yeah. I don't think it was really preachy. I mean, I, I just want people to know that they're special. The only thing I want to add is that if you get them, get Blu-ray. It just oh, makes a huge difference. I would agree with that because there is huge a difference, difference between watching the hidden episodes on DVD compared to the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. uh, Everything's just a little bit bolder. Even like oh. watching from Netflix to the Blu-ray. Oh, like agreed. Well, because you're dealing with a the buffer there on the, yeah. on, the, on the Netflix. It's just How much are Blu-ray players? Because I don't have one. I have they're one for $35. Cheap. Yeah, they're pretty cheap now. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're... Yeah. I just have Black Friday and get them real cheap. Especially. Um, okay, cool. So the next topic is we're going to jump into uh, the comic book... World, not a whole lot going on right now. Um, it's basically Dr. Aphra Annual Number 1 came out last <coughs> week. And basically what we get there, um, and you know how I don't like to go into these too much. I don't want to spoil it for you, but we do get the background of Blacker Santon. Uh, he's the black, badass Wookiee that teams up with Aphra from time to time. Yeah. And we get to learn the background of, of his character, so that's really interesting. Um, this is an annual. So this is the first annual um, for Dr. Aphra. And we mentioned earlier in the episode how that's a character that's really taken off. Um, David, you've read, you've gotten a couple of sneak peeks at Aphra through the comics. Is this a I character where you, you just haven't been motivated to learn more about her, right? No. I mean, I, I think she serves a really good purpose in that 2015 uh, Darth Vader Gillen comic series. Yep. Um, but I I don't see her necessarily as a lead character. Okay. Um, I have not picked up the series. This is one of the streaming Citadel, right? Yeah. Yeah, and... and you know, you'd kind of gotten me interested in it when Screaming Citadel came out, and then as that got progressively less exciting for you, it kind of turned me off to, to reading it. So, I, I don't know, good for it's getting its annual. 
Um, our friends over at Star Wars Newsnet rated it, what, a 6.5 out of 10? You bet. So that, to me, that's not a very, you know, glorious rating, but, um, I don't know. Looks kind of neat. Star Keep Wars in mind that, uh, let's see, we're getting uh, Mace Windu coming out soon. Oh. So that's going to be really exciting. Can I tell you about the small <laughs> Did I tell you about the small heart attack I had the other day at our local comic book shop? You thought it was this past week, didn't you? No, well, I, I thought it was. So I was going to go find the Darth Vader one, which is what, number six is coming out, or five? Five. And so I was looking through his racks, and I see a Darth Vader number five. Mm -hmm. And it didn't click with me that it was the uh, Gillen one from a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So I pick it up, and I start reading through it, and I'm seeing, like, Dr. Aphra, I'm like, what, what the hell is this? And then it dawned on me that it's not the current series, and then I was, like, depressed. I feel bad for you, buddy. I'm sorry. So, I, I, I was excited, and then I was completely let down. Yeah. I get I got let down by that comic book shop quite a few times, and so that's why I dropped it. <laughs> so, uh, just so you know, yeah, Mace Windu is coming out, and we're really excited to find out about that. Again, that's Clone Wars era, or just before the Clone Wars, uh, starting with Mace Windu. So I think that's going to be a really phenomenal series. Oh my God. And, of course, uh, you know, less than ten days from that, then we'll have... Darth Vader number five, which yeah. I'm really ecstatic about. Like, here's the thing: is like we're recording this right now on uh, on 8:30 uh, because we we've gotten a little bit behind. So you know what came out before was Afra. This week, this Wednesday, we're getting Mace Windu number one. As so, in like tomorrow? Week, yeah, like today, because it's like midnight already. Wait, we're getting today? Yeah. It's out today. Yeah, it's coming out today. Like today. But not oh. not yet today. Later on today. Uh, and then the week after that, right now? The, I wish the week after that will be Darth Vader number five, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, it's the one that I've been raving about the entire time because just that cover alone with the shattered eyepiece of Vader, like that's gonna be sick, dude. The cover is sick. Like that's one yeah, where I might have to go get that thing uh, minted, uh, just just for the hell of it. I regraded. I said minted, but I meant graded. Put it in a, into um, you know maybe a, get like a nine point eight rating. That'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. Neat. Neato. Okay, I've cool. seen that one. Are you serious? I've been bringing yeah. up almost every week. Well, I haven't been here the last. Two oh weeks. my god, that's right. I was by myself last week. Really? Um, it's really cool. I we we shown it before. It's it's a close up on Vader's helmet, and the left eye is blown out. I just Google search it, and it's not coming up. But I mean, what we're oh, expecting is, it, is this up here? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I want to get that blown up as a poster. Nick, can we do that? Oh, yeah. How, can you help me do that? Yeah. <laughs> Nick's like my one of my best buddies. All right, cool. So let's jump out of the comic book world. If you have any comics, uh, Star Wars comics that you've read recently that you want to let us know about that we should check out, let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you're excited about that Mace Windu, the upcoming Darth Vader, let us know about that as well. We're I, I'm not reading the main Star Wars line. I've really lost interest. Um, probably like ten ten issues ago. I've read five Star Wars comics ever. They've all been on this show. The, yeah, you do have tendency <laughs> to read right here on the show. That that's good. I, I follow Star, the Star Wars mainline through trades, so I'm always about a month, month and a half behind. But it's it's cheaper that way, and I don't want to, I don't want to spend the money. I'm gonna be honest with you, doing being a Star Wars fan on a budget, it's a reality. Hey, uh, let's talk about Legos, because uh, Legos I ignore all financial budgets, and I'll just spend the money. Um, if you can't tell, the shelf behind me, we should do a tutorial. Of this shelf. This isn't even all of them. This isn't even close to all of them. Um, okay, so here's the thing. So Lego on social media for the last 10 days has been teasing. They've been teasing this so hard. The largest Lego set to date, and it's going to be a Star Wars set, which Do makes sense. Do you know if it's going to be Star Wars? Yeah, it's set. Sure. It's set in the okay. post. It's They've the been post. teasing this so hard. One of my friends that played Pokemon Go with, Kara, she knew about this. Yeah. And she doesn't like nerd things. Uh, yeah, they've she's been like a nerd. they've been putting it like sponsored posts for a while. It makes like, a lot of sense. Facebook and all that. It makes a lot of sense to me because be before the Star Wars line of Legos in '99, you had like the astronaut line and the and the and the adventure line and all these like generic themed lines. Then you got Star Wars, and Star Wars exploded. You know, I remember getting that original Battle of Endor set with the two stormtroopers and the tree, and I thought how cool that was. And I got the original X-Wing and the original Beaming. Very, very cool sets. And it's crazy to see how Lego sets have evolved now here in 2017. I don't like it. The, you don't know what it is, though. I, mean, I like the... I like the old, you no, don't, know what, you no, don't know what the set is! I'm saying the older sets I liked a lot more. Because like, I liked it when they tried to do more... <coughs> with more pieces. With like, older pieces. Yeah. Because now they're just making new pieces to be lazy. I liked it you when think? they tried to like force 
to make things with the pieces they already had existing. My thing is like too many new ones now. Well, so I have the I have the Force Awakens Millennium Falcon for example, okay, and to do the top dome, it's a bunch of fins that fold down. The original Millennium Falcon that came out, I think it was ninety nine or maybe it was two thousand. You can correct me in the comments below, but it was like four hemispheric pieces. Mm -hmm. So that's at four pieces. This Force Awakens model has like hundreds of pieces to make that top dome. So I always prefer that, just because it's more pieces, it's a little bit more detailed. I enjoy and that. You can give Lego more of your money. I, you can. Well, here's the thing though. So I want to get into first off. I have some notes here that I want to go through. I've done I've done some legwork, and I kind of I, I briefly went through this last week. But the top five largest Star Wars Lego sets to date, um, I have. But before I get into that, just what do you guys think this could possibly be? We see a picture of all the pieces sprawled out on the table. We have no, it's not, you know, they're just there. What do you think it is, Nick? So my question is, like, do, you, do they announce it when a trailer drops for this movie? That way they reveal something in the movie where it's like, see that thing in the trailer? That's what this product is. That's what I think is gonna. That's what's gonna happen. Like no. I guarantee you, that's what's gonna happen. That's so annoying. I guarantee you it's gonna be something in that trailer that's likely gonna be like I'm trying to think of the movie like the Hoff battle or something in the Hoff because that's what the movie's gonna be. It's gonna be copy and paste of episode five. I'm trying to think of what's in that movie. The medical frigate. We're getting the medical frigate. Like, I'm trying to think what's in that <laughs> that they might build. I don't know. I have no idea what it'll be. David, is this gonna be a set that we've seen in the past? I don't. I don't think so. Really? I think it'll be a new set. Really? Yeah. What if it is the Dreadnought that we were talking about earlier? That would be cool. Maybe. Where you can, like, lift the thing up and see inside the crew? Well, let's take a look at past sets and see if past has any hint to what the future could be. Okay, so I'm going to start. i got the top five largest Star Wars Lego sets to date. We're going to go back to 2002. Number five, the, <coughs> the uh, 10030 Imperial Star Destroyer. Uh, images there on your screen. Uh, and this was so. This was the first time we got an Imperial Star Destroyer, and it came in this at three thousand ninety-six pieces. Do they have a modern Star Destroyer set? They do. It's out right now. You can still buy it. I might go buy one because that looks beautiful. That is like four hundred dollars. Okay, cool. So I will not be buying one. <laughs> coming in at number four. Get this. Coming at number four is the Super Star Destroyer that came out in uh, two thousand eleven. You can still find this in select. It's it's hard. So, it's hard. It's, it's sometimes at the Lego store. It, it's rare now. It's you have a better chance of just spending a lot of money on eBay or Amazon. Three thousand one hundred fifty-two pieces. You see the image there on your screen, and this was what it blew us away because the detail and the scale of this, and the price point was a bitch for your wallet. Coming in number three, and this is a set that I have not gotten, and I wish I would have. I think it's still on some shelves. Is that 75059 Sandcrawler? It came out, um, and I want to say it was like around like 2012, 13, 14, somewhere, somewhere around there. 14, according to Lego. 14, okay. 3,200 pieces, 3,296 pieces to be exact. $300. It, worth it. it. It's massive. It had like, what, 14 minifigures? It, it was like an unprecedented amount. And the detail was great, playable. Um, fantastic. Number two. Coming at number two, we finally got to the Death Star. Uh, this was uh, 1018 the Death Star, 3,800 pieces. It's the one that is playable, right? So it has all the different scenes as you go through the levels, and you. It, I think it's all a new hope scenes. I might be wrong. There might be some Return of the Jedi in there as well. $400. Yeah, Legos are expensive. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not cheap. The number one... The largest Star Wars Lego set to date, 10179, the Millennium Falcon, 5,100 pieces, 5,195 pieces. That was $500. That was a UCS model, right? Correct? The Ultimate Collector Series? No, this is the MSRP, whatever that means. That's the, like the normal, I don't know what it stands for, so the, the, uh. Spin the image around, will you do it? It's like normal manufactured set price or whatever it is. Yeah, that's the ultimate. Set. That's the ultimate collector series. That's still really damn expensive. Well, that's the whole point. It's the ultimate collector series. <clears throat> I mean, those are like the that is the upper echelon of the Star Wars so, like, line. You're not buying that for your kid. Like, 
like. Oh no, that's <laughs> totally, totally for display. So like, when you buy your action figures, you don't take them out of the box. When you buy a limited edition Millennium Falcon, do you leave it in the box or do you set it up? Well, you, here's my thing, and I know a guy who does this. He buys two of every set. I was set. just saying, do you buy two? He buys two of every set. Spend a grand. <laughs> his X-Wing fighter, if you look, there are people that will pay thousands of dollars for the 99 X-Wing. Thousands. I'm surprised. It's, it's ridiculous. So he buys two of every, uh, two of each one. It works out. I mean, I have, like I said, I've got, you know, sets going back to 99. Um, but I open it up and I play with them because that's why I like Legos. I like to build the diorama. Do you know so, the biggest Star Wars, or not Star Wars, biggest Lego set is? Wait, what? Any guesses? Is it the Taj Mahal? It is the Taj Mahal. Do you know how many pieces? Isn't that like 7,000 or is it 10,000? It's 5,900. Is it 5,900? Okay, yeah. yeah. This is supposed to be bigger than that. That is the architecture set, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those architecture sets are, uh, I know a buddy who got the, um, not the Big Ben, but he got the London Bridge. Um, and that was a, a pretty hefty, I think that was like somewhere around 3,500 pieces. I'm excited to see what it is, but I really think it's going to be another Millennium Falcon. I don't know. I think... If you look at the color scheme of the bricks that are down there, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's either that or it's going to be a destroyer. I, I, think, it's the, the I think it's the Dreadnought. You think it's the Dreadnought? I think it's the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought from Last Jedi. I would be okay with it because previously, and you can correct me down in the comments below, I'm pretty sure every UCS uh, set we've gotten so far has been original trilogy era. So I'm looking at the comments of this article from Star Wars Newsnet. Okay. Yeah. Net, uh, dot com. Okay. And somebody says that it's confirmed that this set will be seven thousand five hundred and forty-one pieces. That's and that's what like sixteen hundred more than the Taj Mahal. So it's gonna be like seven hundred dollars. How do you build this thing? And that's the other thing too—the price point. I just said last week, and I got no no comments on this, which I was very thankful for. It's literally somewhere between three hundred dollars and nine hundred dollars for this Lego set, right? It's gonna. I'm gonna. I would ballpark it at seven fifty. Oh my god! What if this was the first Lego set that cost more than a grand? I don't think they'd do Why that. Why would they do that? I would hope not. I don't think so. That would be terrible. I mean, they can't even keep the one set that I want, which is the Saturn V rocket set. They can't even keep that in stock. How they plan on keeping this thing in stock? Here's, here's someone else who's saying that there's a leaked comment that it's gonna be the Falcon. And it's going to price between six and eight hundred dollars. I just, you don't need it. And it'll have the crew of episode five and episode seven. Oh. So Han, Leia, Chewie, C-3PO, some of the Minox, uh, maybe Lando, maybe Luke, and then Ray, Finn, BB-8, Old well, Man Maybe Han. we should have said spoilers on this. Well, we can put up just read, off, read, read, read the whole list off, why don't you? Well, I'm sorry. I just don't think it's going to be the Pelican. I, I, I hope I I'm right, because right. I don't want to see it. Well, you know, David brought up a very good point, too. We need to thank the guys over there at Star Wars and the gals over at StarWarsNewsNet.com. They are the best Star Wars aggregator on the internet, and uh, they are apparently a source of much of David's research, which is great, because you guys are trusted. You guys are great. Uh, very good to us. Um, okay, so we're excited for this Lego set. But we're just not sure what it's going to be. Start saving now, David. Oh, jeez. Well, we have we have to update. We have to buy a new camera. I can't. I can't get that. I can't do that. Like, do we need to have conversations now about like when you're allowed to buy this? And I think it's safe to say that I, I won't buy it. But maybe we all go in on it together. So, okay. Like, do you need me to stop you from buying this if we walk around Walmart one day? Like, if you try to put it in the car... Oh, dude, if I get this, I'm buying it through LEGO, so I get those reward points. We might be able to, like, recoup some of our losses, too, if we do, like, a... If we buy it day one, yeah. build it day one, <laughs> Post the do video. a time-lapse video of us building, and, like, a video... Like, we might be able to recoup some of the money back from Viewcount. Can we... Do you want to do that? No, I don't want to spend money on it. Oh, God, okay, cool. Well, you know, we can't... If we win the lottery, maybe. Hey, that's all right. Well, you're just dreaming enjoy this show. I like to think that you enjoy this show. And before we go on to the next segment, I want to let you know that when you're done watching this episode, you can learn how to build a custom lightsaber hilt for less than $25. All you have to do is check out uh, Beyond the Blast Doors, our YouTube channel. We'll tell you where you can go to get the parts, what kind of parts you need, and the tools you will need to assemble your hilt. Just search Beyond the Blast Doors on YouTube, click on our channel, scroll down to our Cosplay Cantina playlist, our own Jesse Buck leads us through that experience. Part two, still on the way. Uh, when Jesse can talk and leave his bed, that's when we make the video. It's it's pretty much cut and dry. Let's jump into Stash It or Blast It. Uh, and these are a, a couple top... This, this is the thing that everyone's wondering about right now. Is when the hell are we going to get the next Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer? 
Now, you might remember, like, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Good Morning America made it, like, posted a, a tweet that got everybody riled up. That everyone thought we were going to get a trailer. We didn't get a trailer uh, yet. And we haven't gotten a trailer as we're recording this podcast, this episode right now. So everyone's looking at the, at the, at the Rogue One schedule of when we got trailers. And if you go by that schedule, we should have gotten a trailer, like, seven days ago. Um, I would say let's compare it to the Force Awakens release. You can't. Because no film will be promoted the way they promoted Force Awakens. It's completely different. You know, Force Awakens, you were telling people that, oh, no, no, no. Revenge of the Sith is not the last Star Wars movie you'll ever get. We're back. We're back, and we're going to give you all these other films. So, Last Jedi, I mean, I would think Last Jedi is more of a traditional approach from a marketing standpoint for a movie. It's still Star Wars. still has a little bit more gravitas. Uh, But Nick... What do you think? Are you disappointed that you don't have a, 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 a new trailer? And Do you want a new trailer right now? I'm, I'm fine the way I am. I can live without it. You don't like to see a lot of things in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like seeing... I don't like, I don't like when things get given away too much. Like, I feel like even this, the poster art for Force Awakens gave away too much, where it's like, I don't even want to see that. So, I mean, I'm totally fine with not seeing anything. You know, David, you and I are a little bit different, because you and I really like to speculate, and, and we like getting teased by these mm-hmm. trailers. Are... Are, are you wanting a trailer now? Do you think one's going to happen soon? I See, I'm kind of surprised we haven't had one already, mm-hmm. because it's been a while since our last one. What was it? Was it Disney the Celebration? The first one? Yeah, it was Because we didn't get one at um, E3 right. in July, yeah. and I was kind of hoping to see one when Spider-Man Homecoming came out. We did get a be- uh, behind-the-scenes featurette, which yeah. is what we got with the last That's two. That's not really a trailer. What kind of headway would they give before they play with like, I almost wonder, would you do it this weekend, this Saturday, on ABC, you have the biggest football game of the year. It's going to be Alabama, Florida State, number one, number three. That's going to have a lot of eyeballs on that screen. Wow, okay. Do you throw it during that game? I mean, I feel like, like what demographic you, that they're trying to hit. I think they're trying to hit every demographic. I mean, I think that would hit a lot. Because now, didn't they do something for the Super Bowl for The Force Awakens? I have. Okay. No, no, I think that's Rogue One. Was that Rogue I One? I think it was Rogue One. I mean, that one makes sense, because who doesn't watch the Super Bowl? I don't know how to play football when I watch the Super Bowl. Well, you have 100 million people watching it, so why the hell not? I watch the Puppy Bowl. That's a fun one. <laughs> oh, boy. I think we have to get one in the next four weeks. And I'm not trying to do, you know, a broad generic thing. I think you, I think we get a trailer in the next four weeks, because they're going to have then all those random 15-second things they're going to thrust out there in, in November um, to get you hyped for that, you know third week release. We're getting there. I, I mean, worst comes to worst, we should probably see something by the Thor Ragnarok movie in October. That would make sense. But, I mean, that still feels late to me. When is Thor Ragnarok coming? I know it's October. Right. It's November. Isn't it, uh, I want to say the 12th, but that's wrong. Uh, well, 14th? Next, next Wednesday is 100 days till the launch of the movie. How's those stream tenders? Are you saying hey, you I think cold by now. Thank you for not chewing directly in the mic. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure the folks listening appreciate that too. Uh, no, it's November third. November third. Yeah, so that's that's pretty late to be putting out another trailer. Well, fingers crossed, because I don't mind seeing the new. Honestly, another trailer might actually make me feel more comfortable about this movie. Well, that's we'll, a fun looking movie poster. We'll find out. We'll find out. Hey, let's talk. The insane soul, Brandon. He's a is a fan of the show. He always tweets at us, and this was a question he asked last week that you guys weren't able to enjoy. So I thought I would bring it for Stash or Blast it. Before we move on, Stash or Blast, do we get the new trailer? Um, is that really Stash or Blast? That we're gonna get, are we going to get a trailer in the next number four number weeks? Three. Next I, four weeks, Stash I think, or Blast. I think we're going to get one more trailer, so Stash, yeah, stash, yeah, stash. Okay. Four, four weeks, it's got to happen. If we're going to have the segment theme, Stash or Blast, I need to remember to make sure we Stash or Blast it. The next one does come from Brandon. Star Wars subreddit, the ad on here is NFL. So, like, they're, the football... Do you think audience, maybe the first game of the NFL season? First official uh, season. That would be another good one, too. There's a uh, Green Bay's playing the Rams. Ooh, the L.A. market with the Green Bay following. Yeah, it could happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, is that just targeted? Because when I go there, I, I don't see that ad. He gets Maybe. red tube. All right, so oh. Brandon at the Insane Soul, uh, he asks us, do you guys think... Planet. Are you guys still on this? Yeah. You guys Sorry. are so excited about your, your, your spam advertisers. Oh, check out the subreddit Empire Did Nothing Wrong. Oh, I love that. I love that one. That's my favorite Reddit, of course. Mm-hmm. I, I venture that easily, mm-hmm. daily. Uh, do you guys think we'll ever get the final season of Star Wars, the Clone Wars animated series? David, you're watching this, you're plowing through it. Do you want to get more of it now that you're close to the end of it? 
Uh, okay, so I really struggled in the first two seasons of this show, okay. and I really wondered how the hell it won awards and why you liked it so much. Mm -hmm. But once we hit like the beginning of season four, I have just burned through uh, four, five, and then on my way into six. It is just, it has gotten really phenomenal. So, I, I mean, I don't know anything about Rebels, so I hope the storytelling and the fight scenes are still awesome. So, I mean, if they're continuing on that, then, yeah, I'd like to see more of this. Sounds good to me. Uh, Nick? Question again, sorry. Do, do you need more Clone Wars? Sorry, I don't think yes, you yes. Um, you do? No, um, <laughs> I think what they're going to do is they're going to hold it. Sorry, I, I had a great thought, and the I forgot. The question was, do you think the Empire did not anything <laughs> wrong? I think what's going to happen is that they're going to wait till the next medium comes, so the next Blu-ray... Okay. And then they'll release it with like a re-release of the Clone Wars stuff. I'd be okay. This is like a twenty-year plan yeah. for this. I'm cool with that. I think they're gonna hold it for a long time. I don't think it's gonna happen either. Uh, so I'm gonna blast. I don't think it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna blast it, David. I'll, I'll blast it, but blast yeah, anywhere in the next twenty years. All right, sounds good. Okay. Hey, so fun fact, guys. Our episode has hit an hour, so we're gonna hit light speed the rest of this. Um, but we'll do so with respect because next up is Cosplay Cantina, and we want to thank Becca Blatzer for being our August recipient of the Beyond the Blast Doors Cosplayer of the Month Award. Trying to find, trying to lock her in. Scheduling conflicts has kept us from getting her on the show so far, but she and I, uh, we're all working on it together to make sure that we get her on the show and get to learn about her experience as a cosplayer. I'm excited to meet her. But, well, yeah, I mean, you'll talk with her. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be great. No, it's going to be a lot of fun. She's just a busy girl. She just got done. Uh, she made an appearance up in New York. Sweet. The Yankees game. She was lay up there. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. The White Sox are having a, a Star Wars night. I wonder if they're going to have anybody up there. I wonder sure if Becca might be going to that too. She goes to like everything. This I, I want to know her funding. That's incredible. I'm going to ask her about that. I probably shouldn't ask her about that. But you're looking at uh, another image of her with a, a child. She's in her lay outfit. Oh, it just happened actually. Oh, August, it just August happened. 26. We missed it. We missed it. August 26th. Well, we can still ask her about it. Why not? Um, but, you know, just one last time, we want to showcase uh, Becca, and, and, and this is another image that really does showcase why she cosplays. It's not just to be creative with a costume and making the costume, it's about bringing joy to other people. And you can go on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, find her bio uh, that, she, that she provided us, and her, the bio that she gives us is all about why she loves making other people happy. So how, how cool is that? And we've mentioned this before, too. You know, it's not Halloween. Cosplayer, being a cosplayer, doing cosplay is not, you know, dressing up and being goofy. It's about, you know, like, it's an art form. And, and, and there's people out there that take it very seriously, and they're able to do a lot of cool things with it. You know, if I could dress up as a Jedi and be at Star Wars night at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, that could be like, the, that might be like a top ten life experience for me. That's fun. It's a shame there's no Italian Jedi. <sighs> wow. You know what, Becca, thank you for never being prejudiced against Italian Jedi. I really do appreciate it. Be sure you check her out at Beck Ahsoka, B-E-K-A-H-S-O-K-A. -A. You can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have her linked up as well in all our posts of her. Be sure you check her out, give her a follow, and let her know that you've heard about her through Beyond the Blast Doors, a Star Wars podcast. Time now to tap the fan com link, and we got two questions that we want to answer uh, on this episode. And the first comes from the Insane Soul this week. He's asking us, who is our favorite bounty hunter <coughs> from any era? It cannot be a fet. Shall I go first, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Let me so, this is from any era. My favorite bounty hunter. I mentioned him before. Cad Bane. It is a new era. It is uh, the Clone Wars era. And I think, like I said before, I think he is the one bounty hunter that could be a legitimate threat, opposition for a standalone movie, continued animated series. I think he's, he's just so unique. The voice, the look, the skill set kind of blends a few things that, uh, you know, Boba and Jenga have, right? So you have, you know, the, the, the boosters at his ankles that allows, allows him to fly around. But you know what? He's smart. He's crafty. He's slick. You know, uh, he's asexual. I, I wish he could flirt with women, but we'll never see it. And that's okay. You know why? Because he doesn't care. He just wants the next... What does being asexual, asexual have to do with any of this? Well, I just I just started about thinking how he... I was about to say he's probably good with the women, but... He's like he, a James Bond, but... Yeah! Not just the women. Is that what you're getting Yeah, there? yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, thank you. So, I'm going to say Cad Bane is my favorite bounty hunter. I mean, what what bounty hunter could be better, Nick? Does Ventress count? Ooh, what? Does she... I, I mean, I... Yeah, because at the end of Clone Wars, she's certainly a bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Ventress, you're my girl. Man, that is such 
BS. You should not be able to take that. <laughs> that sucks because she's so good. That's one of my favorite things about the Clone Wars is they took that character and flushed her out. Like, she was cool in that micro series in 2003, but man, they made her cool. Mm -hmm. David? Um, I have to say it's kind of funny. As soon as he asked that question, as he said first, I started searching on my Google, and Nick and I both searched at the same time <laughs> for Star Wars bounty hunters and found the same article. So it was like, it was like we I wanted like, to make sure she was in the list. It was like we were clicking in stereo. It was kind of <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, I... I, my, the first thing that popped into my mind was IG-88, but I wanted to look to see if there was somebody else that I wasn't thinking of. Um, Ventress, I saw that on the list, and I don't know if I have a feel about her as a body okay. hunter, but um, when I was younger, I loved IG-88. I loved the fact that it was just this robot that kind of had its mind of its own. Um, I remember being in like middle school and reading on like the old Star Wars database before they switched to Wikipedia about how he just kind of got up and killed his creator and downloaded himself into four different versions, you know, IG-88, A, B, C, and D, and the one we see on screen was, I think, C, and um, I just, I, I love that fact. I think that's really cool. I might so, be dumb here, but is he the one that was in one of those shorts, the animated shorts that came out? Um, yeah, the rotating heads, it's like the black yeah, head, kind of looks yeah. like a cone, and that, like yeah. the forces of destiny ones. Yeah, that's what I got now, okay. So, cool. I'm going to go with IG-88. That's, I, you know what, I like the variety here. I like that a lot, and it's, but yeah, I, I think that's awesome. Um, if you have a favorite bounty hunter that is not a FET, be sure you let us know in the comments below. I think we're, we have to be think, forgetting of a few good ones. I mean, I'm there's, sure. There's Bosk. You know, there's the, the gallery that we get there in Empire. That's weird. Or a Sung. But what does she do? I mean, like, we see her in Clone Wars a little bit, and we see her that one moment in Phantom Menace. She's that cool-looking girl that they just did nothing with. Is that where her face kind of changes? No, that's a change. That's the change that's from, changing. um, that's Zam Weasel, right? I don't Zam know. Weasel from Attack of Clones, is that who you're thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. flies a green ship, yeah. yeah. Um, she gets all weird. Kind of makes that sound too. Um, well, she, when she could. She gets. Yeah. She gets no, you're right. Um, I do want to make sure that we thank Brandon for the question. Thank you as always, man, for supporting the show. Always appreciate your question. Next guy we got to thank is uh, is uh, Chief Palpy because he always is tweeting us as well. Emperor Palpatine at Chief Palpy asks, What if Jar Jar never gave me emergency power? So this person, he, you know, he really does don the personality of Emperor Palpatine. Uh, but what if Jar Jar never gave uh, Palpatine emergency power? David, what do you think? I think somebody else would have given him emergency power. I think why it was important that Jar Jar did it, because obviously Padme would not have, and I think it looked really good politically that somebody from his home planet, because he's from Naboo, mm -hmm. uh, was the one who motioned in faith to give him this political power. Okay. So I think that if it hadn't been Jar Jar, um, Palpatine would have found somebody else to make that ploy for him. Okay, I can roll that, Nick. I think just it goes down to that whole conspiracy theory that Jar Jar is actually the mastermind behind the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, he uh, he had no choice. He had to keep the, the thing going. He's, he's snug. I... Oh. I really think that if he it's doesn't give, if he doesn't give emergency power to Palpatine, there is there's just no Star Wars. But then that's impossible, right? Because we had the originals first. But I that's kind of a weird thought, though. Yeah, uh, that's like something I never would have ever questioned. If, if if Jar Jar doesn't give emergency power, you really erase everything that comes after that. Because I don't think it all it doesn't all escalate. Somebody, somebody else would. I mean, Jar Jar was kind of a weak-minded fool, and there's got to be several of those because they're all politicians. Shots fired, man. I respect that. Pew, pew. That's crazy. Oh, good sound effect. Um, no, I, but I think that is a really good question. He, there, he also asked last week, he was saying how, like, um, what if you replace Jar Jar with Captain Tarples? And does that make Phantom Menace better? Captain Tarples is, like, the general Gungan that, like, hangs out with Jar Jar oh, in the battle. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. anything other than Jar Jar would have been better. I think the solution to the Gungans, and I think it's the same solution for the battle droids... To just you, delete them out of the script. No, I think they're good. I think you just change the voice. Solution. Don't make them, like, naive, <laughs> stupid. Make them intelligent, but with a deeper voice. I can Something see. more daunting. I can see you know that. I don't. No, don't need that at all. That was for the kids. I can see that. Cause I, mean, I guess, I mean, like, their model set is kind of neat looking for yeah. a human or like an alien. Right. And if you think of the droids, it's like you don't need Ranger. I mean, if you had like a like a very rough 
aggressive sounding voice. I mean, there's droid voices used in Clone Wars that are way cooler sounding than what we got with the regular battle like, droid. I guess Boss Nass has a pretty cool voice. Minus is like, Brr. yeah. When the slobber hits the screen, that's when I lost interest. Um, okay, that's when you lost interest. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I forgot. Um, you know what? Why not? We've already gone over an hour, so we'll just keep going. Um, who is your favorite new character from the Disney era of Star Wars? That can include The Force Awakens, Rogue One, new novels, and comics. This is from our good buddy, Star Raptor. He also has a really cool channel as well. You can check him out. He doesn't just do Star Wars. He literally does everything. I don't think he sleeps. I digress. I know what that's like. Favorite new character from the Disney era of Star Wars. Ray. Okay. No question. She's my girl. All right. Well, I feel like that's all you need to say about that. Yep. David? Um, who's yours? I'm thinking. My favorite? I'm trying to decide between two right now. Mine is a cop-out. Um, it's, it's, well, it's kind of a tie. It would be Kanan Jarrus, because I like how it's, um, I, I just like the, how that, cre that character has been created. We got introduced to him in Rebels. He got his origin story flushed out in the comic that came out about him. And, uh, we're, I think we're going to see his fate, his death, in season four of Rebels. But I like how it's fleshed out. I think Freddie Prince Jr. does a great job of voicing the character, and I think it's it's kind of like you kind of feel like he's all, he's kind of like a samurai, kind of like a, a warrior in that sense. Uh, but the cop out that I answered this is, is Thrawn. Even though Thrawn was from the EU, he wasn't an official canon really until brought into not only the Rebels but then Timothy Zahn released that new novel this year um, that kind of sets up his origin uh, in a way. So those are my two uh, that I really enjoy. Nick, have you been able? Oh wait, Nick, you were Ray. Okay, cool. I'm, I haven't gone yet. Oh yeah, what did you say? So I'm, I'm still floating between two. Both of them are Rogue One characters. Okay. K2SO pops to mind. <clears throat> probably is the honorable mention. Okay. Um, because I I love his, his, he's just funny. I yeah. like him. Okay. Um, his, his snarkiness is that the word I want to use? His sassiness. Yeah. Um, but then the one that that really jumps to mind when I think put my mind to it would be Krennic. I was gonna say Krennic. Damn! Um, why did I think of Krennic? Krennic was my number two. And, Dude, uh, that's I such a Krennic. good one. So I'm, I'm floating between Krennic and K2SO, but I, I think Krennic's gonna lean towards my number one. You have to go Krennic because I I love I, that I his have the IMBD open. Damn. I, that was my second choice. Yeah. I love that his motivation to be a bad guy is not for power, not for greed. It's just that he wants to be really good at his job so he gets promoted. You know, he's not out there trying to kill everybody. He just wants to be really good at his oh job gosh. so he can get that recognition. That's that's a great pick. I think, too, I'm sold just because the acting on that role was just phenomenal. Yeah. I think I think he just did such a good job with that role. And I've, I've always loved Krennic just for that. Yeah, I think... Oh, man. I think... Damn. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Krennic would probably be my... Now that I think about it... Like that's the original. That, that was really cool. All right, cool. So that's going to do it for uh, tapping the fan comment link for this week. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. Those were good questions this week. Damn good questions. I like those. And be sure that you send those damn good questions to us on our Twitter account. Just tweet at us uh, with the hashtag Beyond the Blast Doors. Or we, you just hashtag Beyond the Blast Doors. Have we ever done a fan comment link without a question from Chev Palpy? Um... I don't think I mean, without him you... or with Star Raptor. I think those two have are they're they're every week. And Brandon, honestly. I mean, did you do this by yourself last week? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I I just I just kept talking. Hey, we're at the last segment of the show. This has been really fun. I'm so glad to have you guys back. It's so it's much been more a, fun. It's been a while. It's so much more more fun to have you guys with me. Uh, you know, staying on target. So, uh, David. You know, what's got your targeting systems locked the next week? I have to finish off Season 6 of uh, Clone Wars, okay. and then you tell me that the Rebel Season 4 is coming out, so I guess over Labor Day weekend I need to figure out how to watch the first three seasons of that. I can get back in town Sunday if you want to start binging. Um, you also talked to me yesterday after I watched the episodes where Ahsoka gets screwed by the Jedi mm -hmm. Council. In reading that book, so I think I might take the book with me when I 
when we take off, if you don't mind. Yep, no problem. I'll Hand be, that over to him. I'll be careful. Interact with that. Yeah, it's it's just a great book. I love every bit of it. I asked for it at the end, because if you gave it to me at the beginning. That's a nice I cover. I actually looked at the cover. Yeah, can you be careful with the, cool. the, the, dust like cover? the dust cover? Yeah, I like to keep the dust cover. I'll let you keep the dust cover. I'm kind of anal about that stuff. Nick, while he's doing that, what is your, what's your targeting system the locked on for the next episode? Uh, definitely Rebel Season 4. I think that, I guess Battlefront 2 as well. I gotta look a lot more into the game kind of stuff, because I've been just so out of this world the last, like, three weeks, so I need to kind of catch up on all that happened at Gamescom. You know what's really funny is we talked earlier about how we got to manage, you know, my budget, my finances, because of all the Lego sets. This Friday, coming Friday, uh, it's Force Friday 2. All that merch is about to drop on book sh on, on store shelves Ooh, with Walmart, Target, GameStop, really? all that stuff. Payday, too. Oh, my God, it is. Oh, man, we're going to go. Oh, God, all these I'll porgs. There, yeah. All these porg. Uh, Are they going to be like Funko plushies? Yeah, I'm sure. I want a pork plushie. That's just <laughs> kind of sounds Since gross. Since we released them, the porgs, like, I want the book, Chewy, and the porgs to come out. I want a little porg plushie. Choose I might change porg. my Facebook profile picture to a porg. You look like a pork. Thank you. I take it as a compliment because they're adorable and so am I. Yeah, I used to think you looked like the penguin from the Batman movie. Did you? Well, I hope the Burgess Meredith, you know, know good damn. What? But now, but oh, now I think you look like a pork. Oh, that seems it's, Wait, it's a compliment. Thank you. No, that's great. And by the way, if you didn't know about it, Star Wars has like pork the potatoes. Like shit coming out of his mouth? No. no <laughs> that's how you that. think of me? No, stop it. Stop getting emotional. I'm beautiful. It's the dimples. I was just about to tell you, if you want, you can make pork potatoes. They have the recipe on StarWars.com. Pork potatoes. <laughs> While he looks that up, I'm going to say thank you so much for... Oh, wait. My thing on Target is... Fire Friday. We talked about this already. We just need the end of the episode. David's getting emotional. I'm getting delirious. Nick is crying. We're all very... Oh, my God. You <laughs> Can you please take this picture <laughs> for us so the viewers can see it? Yeah. Oh, this is adorable. We'll go ahead. Um, pork potatoes. I think this is going to be an art project next week. Are oh, we going to do this? How do I put this as my Facebook uh, wallpaper thing? I would encourage you not to do that. Go see it in the wall. <laughs> Note it, but ignore pork it. Pork potatoes. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel if you're watching on YouTube or listening on iTunes, Google, or Stitcher. That's going to do it for episode 14. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure you look, keep your eyes open for the next episode. I guess apparently also we're going to be assembling pork potatoes. <laughs> Beyond the Blast Doors, we're a Star Wars podcast. You just watched it. I want to go to the grocery store right now. Teaspoon of salt. So we just need the damn potatoes. So we need potatoes. Oh, uh, dried seaweed sheets. I can't see over my mic. Stand. Black sesame seeds. I'm gonna enjoy this from afar. So is that, is that just drawn on, or what? What are oh, that's seaweed? Oh, it's sea seaweed I see. And um, what was the other thing? Sesam black sesame seeds. It looks like the nose and mouth of black sesame seeds. That's seaweed. And I don't know what the little little white thing is. That's just. <laughs> like, are, are you supposed to eat them, or is this like hard No, crap? we're not eating something that adorable. Get away from my poor potatoes. Can you please take this picture and put it up when people watch this? Yeah, I... that We we passed that moment already. Did we? Oh, this is... Oh, my, Nick, there's another picture! Look at it! Oh my god, it's yeah. close up! <laughs> he looks so cute! If he anyone's looks, still listening or watching so at this point, afraid. I just want to acknowledge how annoying it is that this is the most excited they were the whole <laughs> fucking episode. How could, you, how could you not be? Okay. How is this not a story? Why didn't we leave? We didn't lead with Obi-Wan. We didn't lead with pork potatoes. Led with Obi-Wan last week when you were here. And pork, the pork recipe was my staying on target, I think. That was, that was beautiful. Pork potato. Well, guys, an hour and 25 minutes later. Glad you got your pork potatoes. <clears throat> Save image. They have like a as whole like cooking thing on this. Desktop. Board. You make Darth Maul waffles? And then where's uh. Malf Malfuls? Facebook. Oh boy. And then. See, as much as I want to do that, I gotta make my own first. I think mine. I'm gonna be. Oh, I don't think I can make anything else. Like this.